Hello, good weekend. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets, or should I say US markets. Be sure to visit CFDS.com for your trading needs. Certainly qualify for that potential generous bonus on offer, and uh, certainly visit the specialists in spread betting and CFD brokerage. Alternatively, you can visit the website, which is the educational site, www.cfds.education, to certainly learn more. Okay, so US markets, let's see how we can decipher this. Um, the um, main catalyst for the driver of the uh, US markets is the yen. So let's start by looking at the uh, yen itself. So if I bring up the chart of the yen, bear with me. Okay, here we go. So if we go to a daily chart of the yen, you will see that we are into uh, gap fill support, therefore looking for a potential bounce on the, the yen and therefore looking for risk aversion. Okay, in global markets. Also with regards to Nikkei, the Nikkei seems to be uh, a, uh, an important factor as well. Now the Nikkei itself certainly has rallied, which in and of itself uh, inadvertently has helped the US markets to uh, certainly move higher. Uh, whether that's uh, expectations of more stimulus from China or especially the fiscal stimulus side of the, the equation. Now, Mr. Corolla is speaking overnight tonight, so again, that's going to be quite important in terms of the potential movement in the yen. But from my perspective, given the fact that the Japanese Nikkei has closed this gap above and the yen is into gap fill support, you are looking at the Nikkei falling and the yen certainly appreciating as well. Also, the markets have rallied due to the China fiscal stimulus. Now, if I just bring up this article for you, which is on Reuters, China's economy will absolutely not, not experience hard landing now. It's a strange type of article, but nevertheless, Let's just allow me to uh, explain it now. The important factor here is that the draft goal of running a fiscal deficit equivalent to 3% of GDP, while up from the previous year's target of 2.3% disappointed some. Okay. Uh, Zhu emphasized the channel work to improve the efficiency of government investment, blah, blah, blah. That'll be a contrast to the last stimulus injection after the global crisis when Chinese government, government built gold cities, roads to nowhere, and airports reduced growth. Okay. Suggesting a desire for more targeted spending. Chinese are blah, 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 blah. Okay. Well, basically, the the uh, the insight here is that Premier League off outlined a series of targets and issues such as energy consumption, job creation, inflation, but few details on how they will be met. Many investors had been hoping that China would post an aggressive target for fiscal sense spending the broad growth, though. If fiscal stimulus was only 3%, everybody expected more, so therefore that's a risk off trade. Okay, so that itself inadvertently is risk off. And the yen being in support is risk off. Also, the yuan, the Chinese renminbi, obviously, is uh, potentially topped out here as well, and therefore you are looking for a potential reversal, okay? Now, the other factor, if we bring up the chart, the USDJPY, because that is certainly important here as well, so I'm going to bring up the chart of the USDJPY, bear with me. Okay, here we go. Now, this is an important chart as well. Now, if I just go to a daily chart, first of all, you can see that we are now potentially into resistance and looking to potentially reverse the four hour chart obviously is holding that resistance zone as well 60 minute chart certainly has topped out and looking for potential reversal so therefore looking to move down you can see that the gap higher or uh, the gap higher certainly has been cl has closed and certainly indicating weakness and therefore looking for risk off and you are looking for a further move lower on the USD JPY okay Especially given the fact that the earnings or average, average, average hourly earnings from the US was certainly weaker on Friday, and that obviously indicated a risk aversion or risk off tone. Okay, now let's just bring up the uh, the actual uh, fundamentals over the weekend. Nothing really out of the US. In terms of economic data going into Monday, you have labor market conditions, Fed Stanley Fisher talking as well. That's really the only US economic data on point. So again, that's not really going to move markets as much. It's going to be the news from China and obviously Mr. Corolla overnight and general movements in the uh, Aussie and the Kiwi, which will indicate um, <clears throat> potential support. But from the article that we've just read that China certainly is disappointed in terms of its additional fiscal stimulus was expected to be more than 3%. So that alone will cause a risk aversion trade. Now, let's bring up the actual charts now. This is an important factor. OK, first of all, let me bring up the chart of the uh, Russell 3000 because that is certainly is the most important one of the most important indices okay now let me bring up the chart of the Russell 3000 and the daily chart of the Russell 3000 is into gap fill resistance therefore one would presume that you are looking for a reversal in the market you have a bearish engulfing candle at the key resistance zone and therefore you're looking for a potential reversal now you did have gap fill here 
Okay, so we're approaching gap fill resistance on the daily chart, and you can certainly see that on the 60 minute chart as well. Now, bring up the Russell 2000. Here we go. Okay, so Russell 2000 10 minute chart, we made a lower high after creating resistance there, broke out that bullish channel. 60 minute chart, you clearly see that we put in a bearish engulfing candle and therefore indicating a reversal. And the daily chart certainly is holding gap fill resistance and therefore looking to move lower. The weekly chart, the Russell 2000 previous support equals resistance and therefore looking to potentially move lower. So the Russell itself is certainly into resistance and looking for a potential move lower. So that's the important factor to remember here. Now the S&P 500. Okay, let's bring up the chart of the weekly chart first of all. Okay, so we have this 51% retracement resistance zone. Okay, looking for a potential retrace here on the weekly chart. Daily chart of the S&P 500, you have previous support equals resistance. Yes, you do have this unfilled gap that needs to be tapped at 2016 and you do have that 20 MA at 2020. So again, uh, one can't get too bearish here on the S&P 500. One needs to be uh, uh, aware of that potential gap. And again, that can be a, uh, a cause for concern if you are overtly short or blatantly short and nakedly short in this market. So again, there is a strong possibility of that gap feeling closed. But at this juncture, the way in which I'm reading Chinese economic news, etc., etc., I'm expecting a risk off move, okay, in global markets. Now, daily chart, the S&P 500 is certainly into resistance with that doji. 60-minute chart, you're looking at a bearish engulfing candle, so therefore indicating exhaustion and reversal. And the 10-minute chart itself certainly has pushed up above that 2,000 level. It was a potential uh, uh, bull trap, okay, and the market certainly closed back below that 2,000 zone, just more or less below. And you are into that fib 60% resistance and therefore indicating a move lower. Okay, so you are looking at a risk off tone to start the week off. Okay, and you're looking for a market to move lower. That's my interpretation of events thus far. Okay, 10 minute chart, you can clearly see you had a bearish uh, increased volume on the sell side, and you're holding that fib 50% where previous support equals resistance at that 2000 barrier. The whole concept is, is 2000 has been rejected and therefore looking for a risk off move. Okay, right. So given the fact that the S&P 500, Russell 2000, Russell 3000 are all indicating resistance, we can cross verify that with our VIX. So let me bring up the VIX itself. Okay, here we go. So if I bring up the chart of the VIX and the daily chart, you can clearly see that we're into gap fill support and we're into that 200 MA. And you can see that bullish and go for a lot bullish and go for, but certainly a green candle being registered. 60 minute chart, you're looking at the gap fill potentially holding, you're looking at lower channel support and looking for a potential bounce. 10 minute chart itself obviously you've hit a double bottom triple bottom and now looking to potentially reverse and potentially move higher so this is going to be very very important for my aspect so looking for a potential bounce in the market at this inverted head and shoulders formation okay now also with regards to crude oil okay you're looking at crude oil because that itself is very very important in determining whether or not the uh, s p 500 is going to reverse the four hour chart you can clearly see that you are looking at resistance multiple zones of resistance and looking for a reversal especially given the fact that the fiscal stimulus from China certainly is non-existent and obviously that's going to force equities lower or should I say commodities lower. Now looking at a daily chart of the price of crude oil you can see that you've got multiple resistance zones in this area and therefore looking for a risk off tone okay so that's my interpretation of events thus far. Okay right so oil is certainly indicating resistance also copper as well copper you can see 60 minute chart putting in a topping tail looking for a potential reversal let me just get rid of all this to, uh, technical mess down here 10 minute chart yes we popped higher but you are looking for a potential reversal in the daily chart you can see in the price of copper we've hit that 200 ma and therefore looking to move lower which in turn obviously is going to be where weakness or bearishness on uh, on the fact that you are looking for copper to move lower as well and you're looking for uh, obviously oil to move lower and this whole basically uh, situation of this uh, that we are in at present is going to move lower so looking at the FTSE to move lower lower you're looking at aussie kiwi to move lower Everything is in a risk off mode, okay? So, lack of stimulus from China, uncertainty going into uh, Mr. Draghi's ECB, given the fact that the euro is at 1.10, uh, a bun certainly putting a potential top. That's a different story. You're not going to go into that. That will obviously lengthen the uh, span of this video, okay? So, you're looking at the VIX into support, Russell into resistance, SP into resistance, oil into resistance. You're looking at the fact that. Uh, Okay, so yes, so copper into resistance, oil into resistance, commodities into resistance, Aussie Kiwi into resistance, and therefore looking at a risk off mode. Okay, now let's bring up the uh, chart of the uh, Russell, not Russell, sorry, the uh, Wiltshire, the Wiltshire 5000. 
So if I bring up a weekly chart, the Wilshire 5000, you can see that we are now coming into uh, uh, previous support equals resistance and therefore looking at a risk off tone. Okay. Now we've certainly held those support levels below. Ignore that for now. This has been quite a stellar rally to say the least. Okay. So you can see the pivot high to pivot low and you are into that 61 to set, well, basically into that 75% and therefore indicating a risk off tone. Okay. Now in terms of, um, uh, the daily chart, let's bring up the daily chart. You are certainly in no man's land daily chart. You are into previous support equals resistance and therefore looking for a potential move lower, especially given the fact that this market has been in a bearish environment and therefore that would be a risk off tone. And you can see this clearly diagonal trend line, certainly into resistance, horizontal length, trend line into resistance, clearly a risk off tone or a risk aversion trade. Okay, now the next factor we're looking at now, given the fact that I've explained why this U uh, the US market is under resistance, let's bring up the commodity index. Now, this is quite an important index to, to observe. You can clearly see that we do have this uh, inverted head and shoulders type formation on the commodities index, which certainly is an interesting sight, okay, and, and nevertheless, uh, and certainly needs to be observed carefully in terms of the next move higher. Now, given the fact that we've had this Chinese stimulus concern, etc., and lack of stimulus from China, that will certainly trigger a risk off move. But again, that certainly needs to be taken uh, and observed as well. So certainly watch out for that. OK, now in terms of the dollar itself, the dollar itself is certainly into potential support uh, also. So uh, looking for a potential bounce. And obviously, as we all know, a bounce in dollar or the, the chart, of the dollar, you are looking at a uh, risk off in terms of commodities. OK, and looking for the Kiwi and Aussie to fall further as well. OK, now, given that's the situation, now let's just bring up the uh, two main sectors which are the financials okay now let's bring up the daily chart the financials you can see that you are into a doji pattern even though you do have an inverted head and shoulders formation you are into a potential doji and looking for a risk off trade now the weekly chart certainly has impressed okay and uh, has and certainly needs to be respected given the fact that the thrust higher has been quite substantial the 60 minute chart you clearly put in a bearish engulfing candle and therefore looking at this bullish channel to break lower okay 10 minute chart you're looking at hns formation so the financial sector certainly is in a risk aversion mode and looking to potentially move lower the energy sector again 10 minute chart you clearly see you have a hns formation and that's obviously confirmed with the price of copper falling with the price of um, uh, oil into resistance as well and uh, certainly is a risk off tone okay the 60 minute chart uh, as you can see here is into a uh, broken the bullish channel You've put in a bearish engulfing uh, candle and now looking to potentially move lower. 10 minute chart I've already explained as a HNS. So that in itself uh, basically clarifies and signifies that the uh, the markets are into a risk off tone. Okay, let's cross verify that now with the NASDAQ. Let's bring up the NASDAQ itself on a weekly chart. Certainly have uh, thrusted higher pretty impressively. If you use a Fibonacci retracement, take it to the pivot high, take it to the pivot low, and you are looking at a Fib 50 to 60% retracement, which is now into resistance. Daily chart, you can see what we're holding that resistance on. We do have an unfilled gap at 44444. Very unlikely for that to be hit, especially with regards to the bearish news from China. 60 minute chart of the NASDAQ itself, you clearly see we have a bearish engulfing candle, so therefore looking to potentially move lower. 10 minute chart, you've clearly made a, a lower high. The market's rejected that 4355 zone, and therefore looking to potentially move lower back to that 4300 zone. I almost declare that I am short the, uh, the NASDAQ from the 4327. Zone 4328, zone looking for 4300. 4300 should act as support, and it'll be interesting to see how the market reacts from there. Okay, right. Uh, now let's cross verify that resistance with the uh, semiconductors. Semiconductor 60 minute chart, you've got a bearish engulfing candle. Daily chart, you clearly have uh, doji and gap fill resistance, and therefore looking to potentially move lower on the uh, semiconductors themselves. Now bringing up the NASDAQ biotechs, biotechs themselves have been um, uh, struggling. Okay. And you can clearly see ever since the valiant concerns, etc., you're looking at resistance on the pre and daily chart, previous support, equal resistance, and looking to move lower. 60 minute chart, you are into that resistance zone, okay, and certainly holding. 10 minute chart of the SP, or should I say the NASDAQ biotechs, certainly indicating weakness and looking for a HS formation. You can clearly see that here in terms of its movements, okay. So you have this uh, left shoulder here, obviously looking for a head. And you got a lower high, and then obviously looking to break low, so indicating weakness basically. Now let's cross verify everything now with the Dow Jones. Dow Jones Industrial certainly an important index as well to observe. Bring up a weekly chart, and you clearly see you are back into that previous support equal resistance. 
bring up the daily chart, you are approaching that 200 MA previous support equals resistance, and therefore indicating weakness. Okay. Now cross verify that with the trans Dow transports, bring up the weekly chart first and foremost, back into that previous support equals resistance zone, looking at the risk off tone in the markets. This move itself has been quite stellar, and obviously in expectations of this uh, fiscal stimulus from China, which obviously has been non-existent. And also the uh, the, the uh, obviously ECB QE trade as well. Daily chart, you are into that previous support equal resistance. So therefore, US markets are into resistance, and you are looking for the markets to sell off. Okay, so that's my interpretation. That's exactly what will occur. I think that's comprehensive uh, in terms of uh, my analysis thus far. So basically, the summation is that um, the dollar is obviously into support, given the weak, given the stronger data from uh, the US on on Friday. It obviously keeps their rate hikes back on the table or maintains the rate hikes on the table. You're looking at potential two hikes this year and uh, certainly is a um, a concern. Now, whilst I'm, uh, whilst I'm talking as well, you you have news, North Korean nuclear threat against South Korea and the US, more details here, etc. So obviously that certainly is uh, a concern as well. So uh, lack of stimulus, fiscal stimulus from China will be a risk aversion trade. And obviously the ECB QE certainly not working with the euro back at 1.10 level and bonds potentially topping out. Okay, you have commodities now into resistance as well. I mean, the Brexit concerns back in the background as well. So everything certainly is adding up and uh, the storm clouds are brewing and you are looking for the markets to move lower. In terms of the S&P, just give you some levels on the downside. Uh, you are looking at a 10 minute chart here. So you are looking at potential support at the 1985 level. Then you're looking at support at the 1975 zone. That's my interpretation. Now a 60-minute chart breakdown back down to that 1980, and then back down to 1960, and then obviously 1950. So looking at some important zones below. So what chart below? That's probably the best uh, uh, title for this video. Okay, uh, be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs. Goodbye now.